we're diving into SharePoint Embedded in this video. I'm gonna recap what this thing even is because a lot of people haven't even heard of it. I'm gonna go through the use cases for this thing. I'm gonna go through a full demo of a sample application allowing me to upload files and what it looks like from the M365 point of view as well. Then we're going to talk about the compliance for features of this. How does this affect your compliance controls, things in purview? If you're as, as excited about this as I am, hit that thumbs up button and let's jump into it. So what even is SharePoint Embedded? Have you even heard of this thing yet? Well, SharePoint Embedded is a feature of SharePoint Premium. It's rolled up under this whole SharePoint Premium umbrella. And it's basically SharePoint document libraries without any user interface. There is no SharePoint to see. There is just the SharePoint to use. So how do you get to this thing? How do you manage this thing? It's all done through API calls. So this is definitely uh, geared more towards app dev folks, custom app application development that are going to be using AP, the graph APIs, not just any APIs, but the graph APIs to manage the, these, these containers as they're called. I think just think of a container as a document library. That's really all it is. It's a document library as a service. That's kind of the elevator pitch, in my opinion, for SharePoint Embedded. It gives you all the features of SharePoint without any of the actual site overhead. I've had a number of situations uh, in the past few years where an application needed to store files and they wanted to make it easy to store, easy to get to, and SharePoint was used, but we had a site that was created just to store files. So this is definitely a much better use case for it. And another interesting thing about SharePoint Embedded is you can have a different set of sharing controls compared to normal SharePoint and OneDrive. You know, the little sliders in the M365 Admin Center that control how restrictive or permissive your sharing can be in your tenant. Well, SharePoint Embedded is going to have its own deal going on because SharePoint Embedded lives outside the main SharePoint area. I guess you could say it's all still within your M365 tenant boundary. So it's all in your same sandbox, but it has a separate set of controls so that this can be geared to exactly what you need this thing to do. And another big use case for SharePoint Embedded is when you need to separate your data from the rest of your SharePoint and OneDrive data, you need all of this set aside to make sure no one can find the container, no one can you know do anything. It, there's a very, very clear uh, separation between SharePoint Embedded containers, these storage containers, and SharePoint and OneDrive. So very clear separation there, but still allowing a lot of use from SharePoint and OneDrive. So stick around and we'll cover that as well. Without further ado, let's get into this demo. Now the setup for this demo is really more on the app dev side. And I know you're probably not here for the app dev portion, but what I did was install VS Code. Well, I already had it on my machine, but I installed the SharePoint embedded extension into VS Code. Now that let me connect to my tenant, create a trial container type. Uh, you could read between the lines and, and know that one's free. It's a free container type, so you could test this with no cost. That's awesome. So I created the free trial container type. And from that point, I was able to provision a sample application. Now, Microsoft's got a couple of different samples at this point. One is ASP.NET based and the other is React based. So I didn't have all the build tools on my machine here. So what I did was uh, I did have Visual Studio installed. Uh, so I went the ASP.NET route, but this thing will automatically prov uh, copy the sample code which the repos will be in the description below, but it copied the sample code down to my machine and then configured it for my tenant with some of the Azure things like the app registration and the, uh, the secrets. So uh, the application was able to log into it. So it configured the sample application for my tenant and then launched the website. So that's the point we're at now. So let's jump in and start testing out SharePoint Embedded. So we're here on the sample website. Now I did uh, pick the container you had to uh, onboard the tenant as it was called. And I believe that was just setting up additional permissions so that the application was able to create the containers, AKA document libraries, think about that, the, the containers on that container type. So you can create up to five different containers on this free container type. 
Now, after 30 days, the, uh, everything is going to be deleted automatically. The free container will be deleted automatically. All of your content's gone. So it does have a nice cleanup thing if you don't, if you forget to clean this up. But otherwise, just keep that in mind. That's one of the restrictions to the free container type. But we need to create our first container. So for that, um, let's uh, let's do. We'll create a container called contracts because I want to store contracts in here to make sure that they are kept separate from the rest of my SharePoint site. I don't want to have to maintain a SharePoint site when all I really need is a document library. So I'll click create. And now we've got a contracts container listed here. Now, I get that this is not the best interface, but it is a sample application. We're just looking for functionality. I could care less about looks at this point. In reality, you would build your own custom application in React or ASP.NET or anything you really wanted. I think you might be able to do it with Power Apps too, as long as you can execute the API calls. But you could do anything you wanted to for a front end for this thing, for the web interface or a desktop interface, because all you're gonna do is you're issuing all the API calls to store and retrieve files and uh, set things like that. But once we're on here, we do have a couple of options here. We can delete it, we can check permissions, attributes, but what we really want to do is go to the contents. Let's see what's in this thing. So there's some additional permissions that are gonna be required here uh, so that it can, um, increase the permission level to read contents, and then later on it's gonna do it again to write contents. So at this point, it's asking for uh, read access, and I'm just gonna do a consent on behalf of, because in practice, you're probably gonna be uh, doing this on behalf of all of your users so that they don't get these prompts. So we have an empty container, there's nothing at all in here. Notice we, you do have the ability to create folders. So while that's not really uh, recommended at all in the regular SharePoint world, uh, they do at least give you the option here if you need that folder. So from right here, all I'm just gonna do is let's upload a file. So I've got a sample contract file here. I'm just gonna upload this. And here it is again, here's the uh, where it's elevating the permissions up to right level. So I'm gonna accept this one. And there was some kind of an error. I'm not really sure what that was, but I'm gonna just give it a refresh. And there's our file. Now there was an error the first time I tried to upload this file. I'm not sure what the deal is. I've seen that same error come up every time I've tried to stage this demo, but I went back to the application, tried the upload again, and it worked. So for some reason, it could just be a bug in the sample application or something I'm just not quite understanding about how the upload works while you're doing the permission upgrade at the same time. But in any case, on the second attempt, it does work. So we've got our file stored here now. We can look at information on this. We can change some of the metadata on here. We can set permissions. Now, one thing to note about the permissions, you don't have some of the concepts like inheritance breaking that you do in SharePoint. Uh, there are simpler permissions. Uh, and at this case, at the file level, you have read, write, and owner. So it's a, a much more simple permission model than what you're used to in SharePoint. Another thing to note is that permissions are additive. Since you can't break inheritance, what you're gonna be doing with this is you're gonna be adding permissions as you go down further towards a particular file. So you may start out with like read-only permissions at a root level, but then uh, at a file level, maybe at a folder level, you'll grant write access to users. So you'll be adding permissions as you go down the tree. I don't need to add any permissions right now. Let's see what else we've got. We could download the file. We can delete the file. We can make a, a copy of this file. So that's kind of interesting. One, one click there. It's actually, I think it has less clicks than SharePoint has, right? I think it's less, it takes like uh, two or three clicks to do something like this in SharePoint. Uh, but again, this is just the interface itself having that ability. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a SharePoint embedded thing. It's just the way they designed this, this particular sample interface. We've also got preview here. So there is preview functionality built into SharePoint embedded that an application can use if it chooses so that you could preview what's in that particular file, or you can open this thing up 
in Word Online in this case, because it's a Word document. So you have that online version of Word and all the other Office products to leverage within your application. You don't have to build in any file previews. You don't have to worry about uh, whether the desktop application is on the client uh, device. So very, very cool feature. Again, you're getting the benefit of SharePoint without the rest of the site, without the site part itself. You just get in the document library. So it's just down to the nitty gritty, but you have all of these surrounding SharePoint platform features available to you. And we're getting into that in just a minute. But first, let's see how this thing looks from the N365. So if I go to the intranet site, over here. So on the internet, let's see if we can search for, I think the name of that was, uh, the Acme was in the name. Okay, we'll do sample contract. Search for sample contract. Now we do have to go up to the organization level so that we're searching across the entire tenant. And it's not here yet, but as you know, sometimes files do take a little bit of time before Graph discovers them and makes them available through Microsoft Search. So let's give this uh, just a minute and we'll try it again. Okay, it's been about five to seven minutes and now it's showing up. We've got our first document here. It hasn't quite found that second one yet, but we do have our sample document showing up in Microsoft Search in normal SharePoint. Not just that, if we open up Word, we see it there too. So content stored in SharePoint Embedded is available throughout Microsoft 365 experiences, regardless of whether it's SharePoint or Office documents, it all surfaced because it's all stored in Graph. And that goes back to the benefit of using SharePoint Embedded. You see, you've got the benefit of the M365 ecosystem and uh, everything is powered by Graph. So while you're storing things in, in SharePoint, you don't have to have a SharePoint site that you maintain. You don't have to have any external storage configured. All you do is you'll point it at SharePoint Embedded. You'll manage everything through the API calls and you forget about the rest of those little details. We'll just let M365 handle the rest. Now, one interesting thing to note in the interest of full disclosure, here is that I can't click on this and open the document up. I don't know why. I'm going to figure it out. And when I do, I'll post something in the comments below about why I wasn't able to open this. But if I but I can open this through Word without any issue. So I do have permissions to this file, just not the way SharePoint is trying to send me. So I'll figure that out. I'll let you guys know. But let's talk about the compliance features for just a minute. So as you know, we're storing it in 365. That means that we've got all of the power of M365 and the compliance controls at our disposal. All of the protections you've got set up through purview, whether they're retention labels, sensitivity labels, things like that, they're all going to apply here. E-discovery is also going to apply here. Now, not all the features are available just yet, at least not at the time of the recording. So some things like DLP policies are coming, uh, but they're not available just yet. But this is a brand new product. This is a brand new solution uh, for, for certain you know, use case scenarios with M365. So there's gonna be a lot more stuff that's gonna come out with SharePoint Embedded. I hope to be able to bring this all to you as well in future videos. But for now, the big takeaway is that the compliance features are, are present within SharePoint Embedded as well. Even though it's outside of your normal uh, M365 experiences like SharePoint and OneDrive. The fact that they're under the M365 umbrella is the way you know that your data is going to be safe, at least as safe as you have configured it to be. So have you tried SharePoint Embedded yet? Let me know down in the comments below. I wanna know if if you think this is going to be good for people or bad, I want your thoughts on this. I think it's really cool, but then again, I'm a little bit more on the developer side, so I, I see a lot of potential for this where you used to have to come up with a, a storage mechanism for your custom applications on your own, whether that was in SQL or, or some other type of system. So I think it's really cool. We could just start dumping everything into M365 now. There, there is a cost associated with this. So you are paying 
for some storage here, but I, it's a small price to pay in my opinion to be able to have all of your data in one spot and it's all protected by the same set of controls. You don't have to worry about one system being more insecure than another because the features aren't the same between the two. The, there's no parity between the protection uh, levels. Let me know down in the comments below what do you think of this and if you want to see more information on SharePoint Embedded, maybe some more uh, samples, more demos, something like that, more use, more discussion about the use case let me know I'm all for it so this is a great product under the SharePoint premium label another one though is the Microsoft 365 archive which is coming out of preview this month if you haven't heard about that one yet then click or tap the screen to learn more about this because I've done I've, I've already covered this already and it's a really really good feature to do lifecycle management with SharePoint sites and save a ton of storage space and cost so check that out and I'll see you over there.